guys, it's Sydney Galpern from Sydney Sweet Adventures. I hope you enjoyed Chef Nicholas's amazing episode before this. I am super, super excited that we are doing this two-part collaboration. So we're gonna be showing you a whole bunch of different techniques as you saw in the first episode, and now I'm gonna come in and show you a whole bunch more techniques that are gonna be really complementary to integrate a whole bunch of different mediums onto one cake. So I'm gonna be showing you all about ice melt decorations today. I'm Sydney Galpern, owner of SeeMeCakes.com, and I'm a sugar artist. For the past 13 years, I've specialized in ice malt sugar, traveling the globe teaching my techniques to the world. I'm the inventor of Simi Ice Malt, and both my parents now work full-time for me, which is fun, most of the time. Follow me on my journey creating awesome works of sugar, chocolate, and cake art. Whether I'm in the studio or hitting the road, come along with me on my sweet adventures. You may have noticed that I am in a different kitchen today. I am so excited to be here at the International Sugar Art Collection by Nicholas Lodge just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, working in this beautiful kitchen, this beautiful studio, to bring you guys this collaboration. So uh, as Chef Nicholas showed you guys all about the lemon drop vintage martini themed cake, I'm going to be making some decorations today out of ice malt that are going to complement those beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by telling you guys a little bit about ice malt if you haven't worked with it before. So ice malt is a sugar-free hard candy. It's completely sugar-free. It's basically going to be like a lollipop if you were to melt it down, but it is all sugar-free. The ice malt's going to work a lot better for you, so it is going to um, dry really nicely, especially in humidity. It's going to be very clear and it's going to be very strong. So ice malt is kind of an alternative to traditional boiled sugar. It's just going to work a lot easier for you and um, just be a lot better in a humid climate as well. So that's that is what I'm using today. I'm using my Simi Ice Malt pre-cooked tiles. So you can temper ice malt from scratch, from a raw powdered form if you want to, but the ice malt that I'm using today has already been tempered. So it depends on uh, you know each person depending on what you want to do, but you can temper it from that raw form. I'm not going to do that today just because it is a long process, but I do have that whole recipe that I use listed for free on my website, SimiCakes.com. So if you want to learn more about tempering it yourself, go ahead and check that out. But today I'm going to be using the pre-cooked ice malt like I said. So this ice malt is all tempered, it's ready to use, so it's already in that hard candy form in our tiles here. So you can see when it's already in a hard candy form, whether you do get it pre-cooked or if you get it from a raw and cook it yourself and turn it into this, once it's in this form, once it's in this texture, you don't have to temper it anymore. You don't have to worry about recipes, ingredients, temperatures, nothing. It's super, super easy. All you want to do is melt this down in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals after that. And that's going to make it just super, super easy. It's not too different from working with candy melts at this point, except ice melt is very, very hot. So you want to make sure that you wear your gloves. Usually I recommend a cotton glove with then a nitrile or latex glove over top of that, and that devil glove will buffer the heat from your hands. So I do recommend wearing those gloves. Please don't follow my bad example because I'm not wearing gloves. Um, I've been working with this for about 13 years now, and my hands don't have any heat sensitivity left. So I do recommend wearing the gloves when you're working with ice melt because it is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I know some people are intimidated by ice melt because it is so hot, but if you bake and cook, you use ovens and stovetops all the time, as long as you're being careful and paying attention to what you're doing and being cautious, everything will be perfectly fine. Okay, so like I said, I just melt this down. You can use the stove top if you prefer, if you want to start it at low and slowly bring the temperature up on your stove, or you can use the microwave, which is what I'm going to be using today. So I just took my tiles and I melted them down. Uh, so I have my microwave set up back here. I'm just going to grab the ice melt out. Okay. Now, I preheated this a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and pop it back in. So that's the nice part about ice melt, is that you can remelt it as much as you want to. There's no limit to how many times you can reheat it if it gets thick. Uh, with my ice melt, I did formulate it in that recipe I was telling you guys to dry very, very slowly, so that's going to make it just super easy to use. So I'm just going to get it a little bit more melted, but just bring it to a boil. That's what we want to do is just about 30 to 15 second intervals until it comes to a boil. So while that's reheating, I'm going to show you the mold we're going to use first. So the first thing that I want to show you guys how to make is going to be an ice melt martini glass. So this is so cool and so realistic and it's all going to be edible, which is the best part. So this is the mold that I'm going to be using today. So you can see that it is going to be a silicone two-part mold. So there's two halves here to the mold. This is kind of a mini glass, so it's going to sit perfectly on top of a cake or for a centerpiece. And we're just going to put the two halves together and use rubber bands to secure them. So I'm just going to wrap these around while my ice mold is heating. So I'm going to double wrap the rubber bands. 
Perfect. There's our ice melt. So you see how I'm putting one kind of towards the top, one in the middle, and then one will go towards the bottom here. That's going to keep our mold nice and tight together for when we pour the ice melt in. Some two-part molds have sleeves that go around them, but we're using a really hard silicone, so we're not going to worry about that sleeve for this. It's all going to hold together beautifully. So I'm just making sure the edges are all matched and lined up. Perfect. I'm going to grab out my ice melt from the microwave. Okay, and that is perfect. So I can see that I melted my ice melt down to a liquid. So again, it is about 300 degrees right now, but I'm just going by texture. Now, one of the most popular questions I get when working with ice melt is how do you prevent bubbles? So to prevent bubbles, there's a few different ways you can do it. I do have a full YouTube video in my ice melt basic series of all the different ways that you can prevent bubbles. But the main things to uh, kind of watch out for is when you are microwaving it, you always want to bring it to a boil, and then you want to let it settle. So I did let this settle in the microwave for a minute before I took it out, or you can take out it out of the microwave when it's boiling, and then let it settle at room temperature. But you'll notice how even though this is very liquid, it is not boiling and bubbling. That's very important when you go to pour your mold. You don't want this to be boiling and bubbling, otherwise it's going to be pouring bubbles into your piece. So you always let it cool and settle. Hot air rises, so any air that got mixed in or that was boiling inside, after it cools will all rise to the surface and pop itself out. Um, now that that rule also applies because the other uh, way to not get bubbles in your ice melt is to make sure that you don't stir it. So if it's already the color that I want and the flavor that I want, I would just leave this as is and then I would melt it. It's not like chocolate that needs that agitation in order to heat uh, evenly. You just want to make sure that the ice melt is going to melt all the way down because after you stir it, it's going to mix in air, right? So if you have to stir it to mix in coloring or flavoring, which I'll talk a little bit about in just a minute, then you want to make sure that you always bring it back to a boil afterwards, okay? So you can see my ice melt may have just one or two bubbles stuck to the bowl or sitting on top, but as long as they're not moving around and popping, then it is ready to use. So I'm using this beautiful clear first because we want a nice clear glass, and then we'll fill it in a little bit later. So I have my mold all put together, and now what I'm going to do, this specific mold does have a vent on the bottom, so that is going to help that skinny little stem to just not get any air pockets. It shouldn't um, let any ice melt out, but I still am going to be careful, and of course you guys will be wearing your gloves for this. And I'm just going to fill the mold all the way up to start. We are going to be making a partially hollow glass, so it's not going to be full the whole time, but in order to kind of coat it first, we're going to be filling this all the way up. So I'm going to slowly let the ice melt, kind of pour it towards the side and then let it run down and in so that it lets all of that air out. And then I'm just going to fill it all the way to the top. Okay, we're just about. All right, so potentially you could just leave it like that if you wanted to and let it cool. But what I like to do is actually drain it out. And I'm going to do that filling and draining a few times, just like you would with chocolate. And that is going to make sure that you get a nice coating and a shell around the outside to create that glass. It's also going to eliminate any excess air pockets that may not have gotten out in time from the vent. It will eliminate air pockets by kind of agitating it and moving it around. You don't want to tap this mold or anything like that because of the hot ice mold. So I'm just going to drain the ice mold back into the bowl very, very carefully. So I'm just letting it all pour back out. And then I will fill this probably about two to five times, depending on how thick you want that glass to be and how much uh, of a layer that you want. If you're going to be actually filling this with liquid later, which you can do since it's ice malt and not sugar, you have a little bit more time to have the liquid inside. I would say with two or more layers, it would be about 30 to 60 minutes before the liquid drink uh, would eat through the ice malt, but that's still a pretty good amount of time to fill it before they would cut the cake or serve your desserts inside of it. So you see how I just emptied that back out, and then I don't have to wait in between. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up again, just very slowly. Okay. And then I'm going to drain it out again right away. Because the mold was room temperature, it was vastly cooler than the ice malt is, it's going to cool as soon as it touches the mold, so there's really no reason to wait before you drain it back out. So I'm just making sure that all of the excess is drained out of the mold before I flip it back over, and I'll just do this one or two more times to get a nice thick coat. <laughs> 
All right, so I have my layers done. Um, and now what I'm going to do is you could potentially leave this hollow to make the stem a little bit stronger. What I like to do, I drain all the excess out, even if it drains out that stem, and then I like to fill it back up. So I'm actually just gonna fill to the very base of the actual like goblet part of the martini glass where the liquid would go. I'm gonna fill that back up with my clear isomalt just so that it is a little bit stronger and the stem of it isn't going to be hollow. Some of the excess may have drained back down in there anyway to begin with, so that's good, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra. Okay, and so you see how I just filled up to the very bottom. Now you can see this top edge is a little bit messy. That's okay, we're gonna clean that up later, so no worries about that. And then what we're gonna do is let this cool. So you could potentially, like I said, just let this cool all the way and then unmold it after about 35 to 45 minutes at least, or when the whole piece is completely cool in room temperature and not warm anymore. Um, so it depends on the temperature of your room. But what we're gonna do, instead of leaving these hollow, which you could use for uh, edible dishes or bowls, or again, you could actually put drinks inside if you wanted an edible glass, we are going to be filling this up with an isomalt layer that's going to mimic our lemon drop martini. And there's a couple reasons for this. Um, one, just because we aren't putting any sort of dessert or anything in it, but also because when the glass is hollow like this the silicone mold can collect some bubbles on the surface. So like when I do my hollow beer bottles and champagne bottles and things like that, then I don't really mind if there's a bubbly surface because hollow bottles cannot be cleared away with the torch. Usually you can melt over the surface of the bubbles and they'll clear away if the piece is solid. But if it's hollow and you torch over it, it's not gonna have a good ending. It's just going to melt and slump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up almost all the way with our lemon drop martini, um, which in this case will be yellow ice malt, and then let that cool solid but I want to make sure that the clear is going to be cool first so that they don't meld together or melt together too much and that's just going to allow us to have that really really solid thick base that I can torch over at the end and get a nice crystal clear drink effect. So what I'm going to do is just melt a little bit more ice malt. I'm going to mix some yellow airbrush color into it so that it gives it a nice glassy transparent finish and then I will fill up almost all the way to the top and allow this to cool for about 45 minutes um, or more depending on the temperature of your room and we will be right back. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford and welcome to Module 2, Sugar Paste Fondant Techniques. So the first thing you learn on Module 2 is all about the sugar paste fondants. The good things, the bad things and what to look out for to create absolutely fantastic cakes. So then we're going to take you on to the next stage and that's how to colour up your sugar paste stroke fondant. And then after that I'm going to take you on to how to paint on sugar paste, how to create a beautiful little yellow daisy with some leaves. And then we're going to move on to how to make a sugar rose. Now sugar roses are the classic rose on any wedding cake, birthday cake, celebration cake. You're going to love how easy it is to make these beautiful roses. I'm then going to show you how to make very, very simple punched flowers and punched leaves before then we move on to the actual cake itself. And within the cake, I'm going to show you different techniques, how to make swags, how to make ruffles, how to do a fabric effect, and then to finish it off, I'm going to show you how to make a fabric bow. As you can see, Module 2 is absolutely full of great techniques for any budding cake designer. So come on, let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back. We are going to be making our next element for this beautiful vintage lemon drop martini collaboration. So what I'm gonna do next is show you how to make a really cool isomalt coaster. So this is gonna look like a crystal coaster and then we're also gonna put a pattern inside, an edible image inside. So first off, this is the mold that we're gonna be using. So this is another Simi mold. It's just a silicone coaster or frame mold. So you can see it has that little bit of a ridge here that's going to fit beautifully with our martini glass that we made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the ice melt into this but before we get started I wanted to show you guys how you can put a design inside to kind of pull the whole piece together rather than it just being clear or just being a solid color so to do that we're going to be using a piece of edible paper so I just printed out this design on my icing images edible icing sheets and so it's on a plastic backing so I'm just going to peel that away 
I'm gonna flip it over and then this is about a three inch circle that's gonna be in the center here. So I have a three inch circle cutter that I'm gonna be using to imprint so that I know exactly where to cut with my scissors just like that. So I'm just pressing. Having it on that silicone mat is going to be a little bit spongy almost underneath and that is going to give me a nice indent. And then you could also take a ball tool and just go over the edge of the cutter itself and cut right through the icing sheet. But I'm just going to use my scissors and cut along that edge. Because of the way ice melt reflects light, it's okay if it's not completely perfect because it is going to amplify it just slightly. So I'm just cutting along this edge and we're also going to be adding some detail later with the Zioto heat pen to um, add some detail to the edge. So I can always use that as well to compensate, but you see how I just cut out a nice circle here. And we are going to lay this into the back of the ice malt once it's finished. So I want this to look like it's inset into the ice malt. So in order to do that, I want to pour the ice malt first, then lay this piece of uh, icing paper right onto the back. I don't want to put this in first because then when I flip the whole thing over, the icing paper is going to be exposed. And while it still look would, would look really cool, it's not going to look inset in the glass like I want it to. So first what I'm going to do is just pop my clear ice malt that I reheated back out of the microwave. It's already settled like I was talking about before, so you can see it is nice and um, calm. It's not bubbling or boiling anymore. And I'm just going to pour this right up to the top of my mold. So I'm just pouring all of this in, covering over that center. Okay. And I'm going to pour right up to the top there. What I'm going to do is just give this about a minute or so because hot air rises, so if I did tumble in any air, I want to give that a second just to all rise to the surface, and then I'm going to torch the surface before I lay my icing sheet on to pop any stray bubbles to make sure I get a nice crystal clear piece. So we're just going to let this hang out for just a minute, then we will torch the surface. So this mold will also work really good for frames, so imagine doing an icing image photograph of someone, um, or a monogram, or a business logo, and you can put that inside, that would be super pretty. And then how we're going to decorate it later with the ZO2 heat pen and actually engrave on the edges, it's going to give you so much freedom and creativity to get some different effects. Okay, so I can see that I just have like one or two bubbles I can see sitting on the surface here. So I'm just going to very lightly torch. And then immediately after that, while the ice mold is still nice and liquid, I'm going to place my sheet right in the middle. And I can use a silicone spatula or a tool if I need to just to make sure it's not moving or floating away from me. All right, and that is going to be perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this whole thing cool for probably about 15 to 20 minutes or so. Again, I never put my pieces in the fridge or the freezer because the moisture and the condensation can affect isomalt, um, make it a little bit sticky or cloudy. So I'm just going to let this sit at room temperature. Um, of course, the cooler your room is, the faster it's going to go. You could also put a little battery operated fan on it if you wanted to speed up the cooling process, but usually ice melt really doesn't take that long to cool because the room temperature is so much cooler than the ice melt. So it's going to take about 20 minutes or so until we can unmold it and start engraving it with our heat pen. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you guys while this is drying is another way to do this whole um, design a little bit simpler. So let's say you didn't have the martini mold. What you could do is you can use this same cutter. So this is the cutter that Chef Nicholas was using when he made his cake topper. So um, this can actually be poured in with isomalt instead of using it to actually punch out of your dough or your fondant or gum paste or whatever you want to use on the top modeling chocolate, anything like that. So to use metal cookie cutters, all you have to do is grease them. So I would spray a little bit of cooking spray over the surface of this cutter. So just a little bit of any kind of cooking spray as long as it doesn't have that powder in it that they use for baking. It just has to be a pure oil. You would spray that and just use a paper towel to kind of wipe the whole inside of the cookie cutter. You can lay it right on a silicone mat or you can do it on a piece of also greased aluminum foil that will work too so if you don't have a silicone mat or a non-stick baking mat like I, you guys have seen me pour on before um, that will work so so well and you just fill in enough ice melt to cover the bottom and you can actually make a plaque so even if you wanted to make the little martini glass and once it's cool you could stand it up on top of this coaster that would look super cute so you can see there's different ways and different levels that you can go about doing this depending on what you already have in your kitchen you probably have some metal cookie cutters already um, or have a couple thousand <laughs> if you're me um, and it just is something 
something that is super simple and you know you don't have to have all the specialized tools to do something like this of course as you do more and more you're going to gain all of those different little things that you want to do but you can very very easily start out with ice malt with things that you already have in your kitchen a cutter aluminum foil and you're ready to go so I'm going to go ahead and let this cool for about 15 to 20 minutes like I said and then we will come back in just a second and I will show you how to use the Zioto heat pen Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and I have my coaster here that should be cool. You always want to test it not with your finger just in case it is still hot. So I'm going to use a silicone tool and just tap on the surface, make sure it feels nice and solid and then I can very carefully start to pick it up and unmold it. So we're going to do that first. So I'm just going to flex the mold here. You can see the little air suction going away and we'll pop this right out of the mold. Look how cool that is. So you can see it has a little bit of a frosty texture on the front. That's just because silicone collects bubbles on the surface a little bit. So sometimes you get that frosty finish that I was talking about before with the glass. So what I'm gonna do is torch that away because this is a solid piece and the paper is not on the surface. It's under the surface of the ice malt. It won't burn. So I can just, from the side that was touching the silicone, I can go ahead and torch away just on a very low setting. So I'm just going to carefully torch and you can already see how much of a difference that makes. So I'm just going to do about half of it. Always wait for it to cool before you pick it up, but I just want to show you guys the difference of when it came out of the mold and then when I torched away those bubbles and it just makes it nice and smooth and perfect. Now of course you could leave those bubbles if you wanted to. It does give it kind of a nice uh, like frosted glass effect, but for this I want it to look like clear crystal, especially because we're going to be carving it with the heat pen. So I'm just going around the edges and then I'll go in the center as well. And I'm just torching little bits all the way out to those edges, being careful not to melt the edge to, uh, together so that it loses its definition. So I'm just going to kind of light layers and then I'm going to grab my little battery operated fan here and I like to cool it down a little bit just because I'm impatient and I want it to cool faster than it is going to at room temperature, but you don't have to use the fan if you don't want to. If you are a little bit more nervous about using the torch and you want to cool in between layers, that's absolutely fine. So just do a really light layer with the torch uh, to clear away some of the bubbles, then cool it down, let it cool off or use the fan and then go back and forth. But that's just going to give us that nice beautiful crystal effect. And then to add a little bit more light reflection into this whole thing, we are going to be actually carving this with a heat pen. So as this is cooling, I will show you guys our heat pen. So this is the Zioto heat pen. So basically this is like a food safe heat engraver. So it has a temperature dial here because you can use it with other mediums, not just ice malt. Um, this is a really, really cool too. It's pretty new and uh, there's nothing else like it that I've ever used. I absolutely love it. I use this all the time. Um, so there is a dial on it because you can also use it with chocolate. You can carve onto royal icing. You can carve onto cookies. Uh, anything that can take heat, you can carve onto. So I have this set. It's in Celsius. So it's set to between 150 and 200 degrees Celsius and I have it preheating here. Um, the cool thing about this, I just have kind of a big uh, metal tip on it, but it has different tips too that you can interchange for different effects. So there's like some ball tools, some angled tools, but for this one I'm just going to use kind of a tapered metal tip on the end of it and I preheated it for about five or ten minutes before we go. So you can see that Zioto pen just is going to make it super super unique and give you a lot of freedom. I'm just going to freehand a design on this and just do some little uh, indents around the edge just to give it some variation, kind of um, a version of like a scalloped edge. But you can do designs under this. You can freehand designs if you're good at that. You can print out designs and then put it underneath the ice smoke because it's clear so you can actually see through it to follow a design. Just make sure to put something between it like maybe a see-through silicone silicone mat or something so the paper didn't stick to the ice mold. But essentially what we're going to do once this has cooled off from our torching is we are just going to etch into this. So I'm going to start at one spot and I'm just going to melt and pull it straight through. And it, the first time that you do that it's not going to completely melt through so I usually like to kind of wipe my tool off and then go through it again and you see how it's going to give it an etching in the surface. So that was just a straight line and I'm just going to go around and do some straight lines all the way around. One trick to getting these nice and even is I'm going to go across from each other. So instead of going next to it for my next line, I'm going to go across from each other and I'm just going to continue this all around, splitting these sections in half. So now that I have two that are approximately across, I'm going to go right in the middle of those. And I'm just drawing lines across the top of it. Of course, depending on which tip you use is going to give you different effects, um, different widths of these lines, and the hotter it is as well, the deeper it's going to etch in. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around with this, and I will show you the finished piece once I have all my lines in it.
look how absolutely beautiful that is. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick break, but I will be right back and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a blown ice malt lemon. Are you ready to get started making your own ice malt pieces? Are you tired of tempering it yourself and going one or two degrees over, causing the whole batch to turn yellow? Well now, with Simi Ice Malt pre-tempered tiles, your worries can melt away. Simi Ice Malt is a sugar-free hard candy that I formulated to make all your ice malt projects a breeze. I developed Simi Ice Malt to be super easy to use, so that means no matter if you're a very beginner or a seasoned sugar artist, it's going to work great. No more worrying about temperatures or recipes, simply melt the ice malt in the microwave and bam, you're ready to start creating. Our ice malt is crystal clear, made to have no bubbles in it, and works in any climate, which means sugar sculptures that melt after an hour in humidity are a thing of the past. Our ice malt is featured every week on my Cakeflix live TV show, Sydney Sweet Adventures, and you can go to our website for tons of free ice malt tutorials, tips, and tricks. Simi Ice Malt is available in a wide array of colors as well as our signature Crystal Clear. You can find Simi Ice Malt on our website, simicakes.com, as well as cake supply stores all over the world. Check out the list on our website of our esteemed international distributors to find Simi Ice Malt in a cake store near you. See you on my next sweet adventure. Hi guys, welcome back. I am super excited for this next step. We are gonna be making a blown ice malt lemon to go on our collaboration display. So, um, you guys saw before in the episode before this with Chef Nicholas that he made the lemon out of a modified fondant where I am going to, or where he used actually the uh, mold. So this is the uh, 3D silicone mold that he used uh, in the uh, demo before this and so you can see I have his lemon right here it is absolutely beautiful um, and the way he does that is just so awesome so I thought that I would show you guys another way to do this which is using isomalt now you could just pour the mold so similar to how I did the glass before similar to how I filled and emptied or you can fill it solid you can make a solid ice malt lemon or a hollow ice malt lemon just by pouring it into this mold the same way I did with the martini glass but I thought that I would show you guys something a little bit different, and we are going to actually be doing a blown isomalt lemon inside the mold. So we're still utilizing the mold to get the exact shape and the exact texture, but it's actually gonna be blown into the mold. So this is a technique that I created called air casting. It's gonna be similar to how you would actually use these techniques with actual glass work, with blown glass. And I, so I created this mold to work with the air casting as well as pouring. So, and using with fondant and gum paste and um, you know lots of other mediums. But to air cast into this, we are going to be blowing the ice malt right in the mold. Of course, you could do a blown ice malt lemon that you just hand sculpted, but that, they're not always gonna be the same, right? Because it's hand sculpted, it's gonna have some personality and some differences. This is going to be uniform every single time. It gets that texture in there, it gets the shape in there, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out too. So this is kind of an efficient way to do it, to have them the same every single time. So that's what I'm gonna do. I am going to take my mold, and instead of completely wrapping it with the rubber bands, I'm just going to loosely put these two rubber bands towards the top and bottom, so I still can stretch it apart, but it is just holding the pieces together as I move it around and um, use it. So I'm gonna set this off to the side for now because we have to pull the ice malt first. So I'm gonna switch, this is my Silpat mat that I've been working on, but I'm gonna switch to a thin silicone mat, like a silicone baking mat, and this is just going to make it so that it pulls a little bit easier. I prefer working on one of these mats when I'm pulling ice malt compared to the mat with the texture on it from the uh, kind of woven texture that Silpat mats have. So I'm just going to set this on top of my Silpat mat and I'm going to pull my ice malt. Now I'm using that same yellow that I had before, but I'm gonna add in a little bit of white petal dust. So this is the Elite color in white from the Sugar Art that I'm using and it's just a powdered, you can use any petal dust. I like this one because it's ground nice and fine so I know when I mix it in, it's not gonna get clumps or anything like that. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of that in, and the reason I'm doing this, you could do it in just a regular uh, yellow like we did for uh, the lemon drop, so I didn't have to actually put the white in if I didn't want to, but I really like the realistic look that the white adds, because when you add powdered colors rather than using the liquid airbrush colors, it's gonna give you more of an opaque effect, and it's not gonna be as see-through as the airbrush colors are. So you can play around with that. Um, with luster dust as well, it's gonna give you more of an opaque color. The one thing you never ever wanna mix into ice Malt is gel color so we want to make sure that we're not mixing in that gelatin okay so you can see how I just mix that in there is still a little bit of um, clumps of color just because the color can seize up a little bit when it touches the liquid so I'm gonna pop that back in the microwave for just a little just a few seconds and just make sure that that is going to be nice and integrated into the ice malt okay 
So I'll pop that back in. Ooh, not that one. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> so we'll pop that in for about 15 seconds or so just to kind of melt it and all mix it together. And then I'm going to get all of my other tools ready. So this is the sugar pump that I'm using. This is my Simi sugar pump. So this is the one that I designed. And you can see that it has the pump, it has the nice flexible tube, and then it also has the metal pipe. Now you'll notice that this is uh, seasoned. So what I did was, I do have a full YouTube video on this if you want to see all of the in-depth how I do it. But basically I put some cuts in the metal with the scissors and then dipped it in liquid ice malt and then as I use it over and over I don't completely take off the ice malt because as you're torching it you're sterilizing it from the heat and I leave that on there because it anchors it really really strong and that's the way that I like to do my blown ice malt okay so I'm just going to give it a final mix here and just get any excess out any of those excess clumps perfect Okay, so if you guys have seen my past episodes, you'll probably have seen me doing some pulled ice malt, um, some different decorations. So I do have those past videos, and I also have a full detailed YouTube video in my ice malt basic series where I show exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. I'm going to give you guys just a kind of a quick version of pulling right now. We're essentially just cooling the ice malt down into a clay. So see how I poured it out onto my mat, and then I'm going to fold the mat over and start to fold in some cool air. And the cool air is what's going to thicken this and turn it into a clay. So I'm just going to keep folding this very slowly, again being careful that I'm not touching it. I still recommend wearing gloves at this point. And I'm just going to very slowly alternate directions so that this edge of the puddle is lining up with the opposite edge when I fold it over. I'm not stopping before it or going past it. I'm just folding it directly in half and then slowly, so I don't splatter it anywhere, peeling it back. And I'm alternating those directions to make sure that it's going to stay nice and consistent. And then the other thing I like to do is move it over every few folds because it's going to make sure the table doesn't get too warm because silicone can open up the pores of the silicone from heat. And if they get too hot and open up too much, the ice malt can get stuck. It's okay if that happens because you can just put some uh, cool water on it, just remove the excess ice malt, ice malt and put some cool water on it and it will release. But I want to try and keep that from happening, so I'm just moving it over every few folds. And I'm going to continue to slowly fold this until it all comes together into a ball and it stops sticking to the mat. Okay, so I can now see that the ice mold is not sticking to the mat anymore, it's more of a clay. And so I can technically use this now, but it's still way too soft and too pliable to work with right now. So this is where the name pulled sugar comes from. I'm just pulling in air and I'm folding it and stretching it to get it a nice thick texture. You kind of have to play with it a little bit to find that happy medium between stretched and folded enough that it's going to be cool and firm enough to hold a shape, but it's still going to be pliable enough to actually bend and stretch and inflate the air into it. So after you do it a couple times, you'll get that texture, but remember this can always be remelted back down. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use probably about all of this. Maybe I'll take a little piece off just so that we have some room for it to get bigger. Okay, so maybe about a golf ball, a little bit bigger than a golf ball size, okay? Really quickly, we're gonna heat up the end of our pipe with the torch to make it nice and sticky. Okay, I'm gonna insert that about a third of the way into the ball of ice malt, or slightly less than half, and then secure it down at the bottom so that it's sealed, so no air can leak out. And it's gonna stay nice and strong on the end of my pipe. Okay, just kind of getting a basic shape. And I'm gonna start inflating a little bit of air first, so I'm just gonna give it one pump and let the pressure build up. It's not gonna go all at once. It takes a little while for the pressure to build up. So I'm gonna give it one pump and then stop and wait. I know it looks like nothing's happening, Ooh, but it's just slowly starting to inflate that air in. Okay, you can see it's falling down a little bit. So just like with blown glass, how they keep rotating it, it's the same idea. I'm gonna start stretching up at the base a little bit so it will reach down into my mold. And now, before it gets too big to actually fit in the cavity of my mold, I'm gonna bring this over. So of course from here you could hand sculpt it, but to use the air casting technique, I'm just going to separate the two halves, put them right in the middle here, and I'm not pressing down against the bottom of the mold, I'm kind of suspending the ice malt in the middle of the mold as I'm slowly inflating. So I'm just going very careful. I am holding the mold with my other hand because this is still silicone, it's still flexible. So I don't want it to kind of open the mold up 
as I'm inflating air. And I know that it's done as the stem starts to inflate. You see how it's getting bigger and kind of filling out there? So when the ice melt runs out of room in the actual cavity of the mold, it's going to start inflating upward, and that's how I know it's done. So you can see I'm just doing itty, itty, bitty little pumps of air. I am going to just release my valve. That's why I really like having the valve on the end of my pipe. And that is going to make sure that the air stops inflating upwards so that it will just cool inside the mold. So I'm just going to kind of taper this off with my fingers so it's a little bit easier to cut once I'm ready. Adding more air if I feel like it's deflating. I am pushing down a little bit and I'm just wriggling it around to make sure it feels like it's all stuck to the sides of the mold and getting that beautiful texture that lemons have. Okay, and now I'm just going to let this cool. So I'll let it cool almost all the way. Uh, this would probably take maybe about five minutes or so to cool because it is such a thin layer in there. But I'm going to take it out a little early because since we do have to kind of handle this a lot, we want it to still be slightly warm. We don't want this to be ice cold in the mold or room temperature because when it's warm it has a little bit of flexibility to it and it's easier to unmold it without cracking. So I'm going to take this out after about maybe two to three minutes and then I will uh, continue to cool it all the way if it has any little bit of warmth left to it. But I'm just going to let this sit. You don't really want to use the fan with this because the silicone is in the way. The fan's not going to get all the way to the inside of the mold. So I'm just going to practice my patient skills and I'm going to let this sit for about two minutes before we unmold it. Okay, so now it feels like when I kind of jiggle the pipe that it is releasing and kind of stretching and it's bending slightly, but it's not really moving at all. So what I'm gonna do is just take off my rubber bands very carefully, still supporting my pipe. And then I'm just going to very, very slowly start to push down and away at the seams. And there's our lemon. You can see it pops right out. And look how absolutely awesome that is. You can see all of that beautiful texture that we were able to get into the lemon with the mold that already had that texture in it. And it just gave it that perfect shape. So like I said, I'm just going to take my fan. I'm going to cool this down a little bit until it's completely solid and there's no more warmth to it. It's down to room temperature. And then right at that top uh, section here where you can see the lemon shape ends, I'll just heat that up with the torch and cut it off with scissors. Now that will leave a slight opening so you can potentially fill it with something if you wanted to put like a lemon filling in it and then they have to break it over a dessert or you could fill it with sprinkles or something like that. It also works really great with chocolate for that if you put it with sprinkles over a um, you know a bowl of ice cream or gelato. But to finish off my lemon I'm going to use the exact same dust that Chef Nicholas used and that is going to keep everything in the same color family. So I'm just going to mix them with a little bit of alcohol and start painting up my lemon to give it that realistic texture and depth in the color of the rind. I'm Sydney Galpern, owner of SeeMeCakes.com, and I'm a sugar artist. For the past 13 years, I've specialized in isomalt sugar, traveling the globe teaching my techniques to the world. I'm the inventor of SeeMe Ice Malt, and both my parents now work full-time for me, which is fun, most of the time. Follow me every Wednesday on my journey creating awesome works of cake, chocolate, and sugar art. Whether I'm in the studio or hitting the road, come along with me on my sweet adventures. Watch Sydney's Sweet Adventures every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on CakeFlix Live TV. Okay, we're back and now we get to do my favorite part, which is all the finishing touches and putting the whole thing together. So I'm going to go ahead and start by unmolding my martini glass. So I'm just going to take my rubber bands off very carefully and I'm going to unmold it here so that it comes right out. So very, very, very gently, I'm going to press down and away at these top seams. After a couple minutes when the ice melt was cooling, I did just take a tool and kind of clear away some of the excess. You could take a toothpick and just pull away some of the excess from the top. But I'm just slowly sliding my fingers down. You don't want to rush this. You just want to start getting the suction away because the suction is really what is going to be holding these two pieces together. So I don't want to just yank it apart. I just want to be nice and gentle and slide. Ooh, look at that! So we have our first half. Once I take it off this yellow here, it's going to look super, super cool. All right, and there is our martini glass. You can see that beautiful level of that nice bright yellow that is rising up, and then we have that nice thin edge at the top. And so what I can do is from this little vent, I'm just going to take my scissors and just cut away some of those excess pieces 
And then I'm going to clear away some of these bubbles on the side by just lightly torching them. I don't want to do anything too drastic because I don't want to hurt the top edge that's thin here. I'm just going to torch a little bit on the actual thick part and on the stem of the glass so that it will clear away some of those bubbles. And then on the very top edge, I will torch lightly as well. We're going to be adding a sugar rim to this, so I don't need to make sure that it's too, too perfect since we are going to be covering it up. I just want a nice, smooth base. So I'm just going to use my torch and finish up all of those little touches. To finish off our glass, we are going to be adding a super cute sugar rim. So I'm going to use a little bit of this Nicholas Lodge edible glue here, and I'm going to be kind of coating the edge, just like you would a real glass, with some beautiful sugar crystals. So I'm just going to dip the edge, and then dip it in the sugar. Hi everybody, I'm back and uh, going to put together uh, the elements I made in my episode for the uh, vintage lemon drop martini themed cake. And uh, so this is the cake we're going to do. So this has been covered in an aqua colored sugar paste rolled fondant to obviously tie in with that sort of vintage look and color. This is very sort of vintage Florida when you think of the, these colors, the aqua and the lemon. And a uh, perfect color combination with obviously the white. And uh, obviously in my episode, I talked about the uh, martini glass on the top here um, so I've attached that and I'm going to have made some letters so I've just used uh, one of the Katie Sue uh, letter molds and this has this nice scrolly design which really like mimics the scrolly design I have in the rolled fondant this is done with the texture mat um, and so I'm gonna put my elements on and then Sydney's gonna come back and show her isomer elements to finish off the cake now when you're attaching decorations in my uh, last episode on cake flicks live episode number six um, I showed how to use softened fondant or sugar paste so here I have this aqua color just softened with water and I'm going to use that to attach the decorations and um, I've already put the small martini glass. So this small martini was done with the party drinks mold from Katie Sue Designs. I've stuck the big martini glass on. And in here, you just would take a little bit of this softened fondant. And you see, you're just gonna put a little bit of this on because this is really nice and strong. So it will hold things perfectly. And then you can use tweezers here just to lift this up and just gonna pop this into place. And I'm just gonna use my little companion tool here just to slide things around and if any should squash out don't put it too close to the edge you can of course uh, just use your little uh, needle tool applicator here to take that off so I've got the 30 on the top which obviously is the sort of theme of our um, lemon drop martini theme um, I'm then going to put the lemon slice on the top so this is my lemon slice with a little uh, small uh, it's got the little small uh, drink stirrer here again you can just sort of pop this on and this is going to sit here. So this will just fit perfectly in the top there. So you see how this finishes off the top um, of the glass. And remember, on the, um, on the martini glass that Sydney is going to use, we've done the larger uh, blossom. And then um, I've got here the, the lemon that I showed you. And what I've done here is I finished off the edge of the branch here. So when you cut, like for example, a lemon tree or any type of tree, when you cut it with a pair of uh, scissors or uh, cutters, you're gonna get the sort of the color of the, uh, the bark around the outside and a creamy color. So all it is, where I cut this, I took a little tiny piece of cream colored um, gum paste or flour paste. I just pushed it onto the end with a little bit of piping gel and then some chocolate brown dust around the edge. So it looks like you've just cut the sort of the branch off the tree. Now, you don't necessarily have to stick this down, all right? Um, you could just place this because, like for example, if I was doing this for a client, a lot of times the client will want to take this off and keep as a memento of the cake. But if you are gonna stick this down, of course, what I would recommend use a little bit of the softened fondant underneath the lemon and that would just stop it going. Um, if I was delivering this to a client, I would often take the lemon separately and put it on. But as I said, that would be how you'd attach it with a little bit of softened fondant underneath the lemon. And that means it could just be taken off and kept even 
and if you do stick it on it would still be fine. So my lemon goes here and you see how it sort of mimics the color here, you've got the lemon. I've also added a couple of lemon slices over here. Uh, these will sit behind the martini glass and coaster that Sydney's going to show you. I have the painted one and then in my episode I showed how to do the dusted lemon, um, so I have that here. Um, so those are my elements on the cake, so now it's going to be back to Sydney and then we're going to show you the finishing off. Okay, and now I am back to attach my ice melt decorations. So I'm going to start off with my ice melt lemon, the blown ice melt lemon that I did here. So I always want to place it and just make sure I know where I want it because when you use ice melt as a glue, once it's stuck, it is stuck. I'm not going to be able to take it back off. So I just want to make sure I have an idea of where I'm going to put it. And then I'm going to use ice melt as glue to stick everything together. Ice melt is a super strong glue when you are attaching sugar paste or ice melt or anything that's going to be high heat it's going to stick on really really strong so I'm just pouring a little bit out onto the board you can also use a silicone tool or a toothpick or a skewer just to spread it on so I'm just attaching it right to the bottom so I even use ice malt when I'm attaching non ice malt pieces because like I said it's really strong it dries very quickly and if you're just using a clear ice malt it's clear so it makes it super super easy okay and then our final decorations here we are going to attach on our coaster so I'm actually just gonna set this on because a lot of the times um, like Chef Nicholas was saying they may want to take it off and keep it so I'm just gonna go ahead and set these on but you could do the same thing of adding that ice malt and uh, pouring it out first and then I will attach my little lemon drop martini glass and there is our finished cake. I hope you enjoyed watching this joint collaboration project with me and Chef Nicholas Lodge on this vintage lemon drop martini cake. It was so much fun working I with had you. A blast. Thank you so much. It was great fun. Make sure to watch on Cakeflix TV the next episode of Sydney Sweet Adventures next Wednesday and, and Green Tornado Live. Absolutely. Sure. We may have some super exciting future collaborations also coming up yes. too. So, so yeah, cheers everybody. Cheers. cheers. <laughs>